Hi everyone! Welcome back to my live streaming. Say hi if you're watching. Um, today we're gonna talk about designing again. I think I'm gonna make this uh, weekly topic. Uh, but just uh, until I'm done with this one video a day but I think it would be fun to make it once a week so I think we're gonna have at least three or four episodes so one or two more episodes of designing after this one so we're gonna learn about um, Today I'm going to show you how to break down complicated shapes uh, down to the basics, like basic geometry shapes. So, so the next time you see anything, I want you to think of how can I break it down to its most basic shape. So. Uh, to say something simple like a traffic light it would be a rectangle you know something like that or a person's head is a, is either an oval or a round uh, a circle something like that um, I would like to remind you that if you enjoy watching my live show uh, please 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 subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get the announcement when I'm going live uh, as a, or you can join my Facebook group uh, just type in uh, in Facebook and look for pop Nikit VIP and join that group so you can get the reminder because so far I've been posting in uh, various jewelry groups for the announcement when I'm going live and I'm not sure how long can I get away with that without people start you know marking my post as spam because you know it's every day and uh, stuff like that and some people don't want you don't want to see you every day I guess so if you want to get the notification of when I'm going live either uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel which is the best way of doing it or you can join my Facebook group uh, just search in the search bar in Facebook for Pop Me Cute VIP uh, Hi Starlia Hi 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 uh, Okay uh, I think we're gonna start right now and I'm going to point my camera down to my book here I have a an old uh, creating texture pen and ink with watercolor uh, creating textures in pen and ink with watercolor by Claudia Nice or Nice I'm not sure and. I'm not going to teach you how to draw watercolor, I'm just going to use the pictures in this book to show you that every uh, shape can be, break, can be broken down into its most basic geometry, uh, geometry shape. So let's get started. Okay, first picture is a hummingbird. So we're gonna try to break this shape down. Uh, I'm gonna show you like uh, uh, how you can 
break it down into very simple shapes. For those of you that uh, just first join us in the chat or the it's live show, um, last week we were doing a lot of uh, drawing simple uh, things, how to make this, uh, make it from a template, how to make shapes from a template from a template like this and if you want to watch it it's it, it's on my youtube channel you just search it for like how to draw wait no how to design uh, the first part okay so we have a hummingbird here mm -hmm. hope i do have both on my uh, camera here Hold on. Uh, I forgot to plug in the light. What? It's not working. Maybe I have to plug in it. Sorry, guys, some technical uh, problems. Finally, it's working. So, if you observe this hummingbird, uh, you will see that uh, the basic shape is a marquise. You can see right here. So, why is this relevant? I just uh, want to show you how you can build something because a lot of us like to take inspiration from nature and sometimes you don't know how to make it a realization maybe you think you cannot draw or you think you're not a good enough uh drawer <laughs> is that the word for it? you're not a good enough artist so uh, i just want to show you that it's not difficult to uh create some uh to make say like a hummingbird maybe you have a marquis shaped stone and you want to build hummingbird uh, around it so i'm going to show you how i can how you can break down this hummingbird into a simple a uh, few simple shapes so once you can break down complicated shape like a uh, like real life uh animals or human or whatever you can basically draw anything okay so here's what i'm gonna do uh, i hope you can see my drawing just fine so first we start with the uh, marquees right so this is the body of a hummingbird if you think you're not good enough to draw a marquise, you can try to find a template that has a marquise shape on it or use your stone as the base. But I'm just gonna do a freehand for now. So, once you get the marquise shape, so there's a... I want you to think like a like how many uh how say you want to break this into like four parts okay like a one two three so one two three four parts right and the the wing start from here and the wing is basically just a simple triangle so like so and I think it ends around here 
So there you go. You have a triangle for the wing. So you have the marquees for the body and then the triangle for the wing. What about the head? The head, because it has a point over here, it can be broken down into a teardrop. So let's see. Draw a teardrop. Now don't don't be afraid of mistakes. Like we all we all learn from our mistakes. So that is the head. And then uh for the for the tail it's just a it's a little bit like a like a what is it a trapezoid is that the word I think that's trapezoid so basically like the outline of this is a trapezoid So there you're drawing a trapezoid, right? So now you have the basic shape of the hummingbird. And the beak is just a line. So after this you can of course like refine it to make it look more like the hummingbird that is on the picture. And, and you can uh, erase the basic shape that you started with and you can start making uh, the lines a little more fluid instead of you know like just a straight geometry shape using the to start as a guidance, of course. And it's a lot simpler when you try uh, to draw, start from the basic shape. This is why like breaking down complicated shape into just the basic uh, geometry shape is will, will help you a lot uh, as you try, uh, learn how to draw. So this is just like a divide it into five five blades yeah see like it's like that and then just draw a little uh, pointy ends Now you can do uh, erase uh, the guidelines. And fix it a little. But there you have it. It's it's already looking like, more like the hummingbird in the picture, isn't it? So if you erase the guideline, you got it. It's not perfect, but you know, it's a start. So what do you guys think of this? Like, is this, uh, does this, uh, does it make sense to you? like what I am uh, teaching you right here right now let me know in the chat and you can keep like perfecting the shape as you go
So it, it wasn't so hard, was it? And perhaps you have, you can have something, I don't know, like a stone on it and you want to make like this stone maybe for the hummingbird or something like that and you can adjust it like I, I was just, if you're working around the stone of course you have to uh, try to adjust uh, I think the stone is good as the base of your jewelry so you work around your stone but I just want to show you that it's not difficult to uh, draw a, you know, kind of like a realistic uh, shapes. Okay, so now we have the hummingbird down. Um, let's move on to what about some butterflies? So I see a lot of jewel, uh, jewelers like butterflies. I've seen a lot in like wire wrapping and you know metal smithing, casting, because butterflies are beautiful, right? And the same as the hummingbird, you will want to break down the shape into just a few basic shapes, like the wing. You can see that it is just a triangle and this is also a triangle, triangle, triangle. So just four triangles with a like elongated oval right here as the body. Uh, this one is a moth. Uh, what is it? Polyphemus moth. Uh, Bonnie asks, do you think drawing skills are really necessary to the jewelry design well? I don't think so because uh, you're not really drawing like uh, a lot of a lot of jewelry like built their designs around the stones and you can also buy uh, like pre-made casting pieces that you can combine uh, to your design. Like I think drawing skill is not really necessary but you probably want to have an eye for the design. Like you want to learn, like everything is, uh, you can learn, you can educate yourself. So it's not, I would not say it's uh, you know you were born with a skill to draw but those who can draw well practice a lot so it has something to do with practice and a good thing about internet you can get information uh, really easy now so you can learn about you know like color theory or uh, how to create a balanced design you know, basically you can train yourself to uh, be a good jeweler by just like, you know, watching tutorials on the internet. It helps also if you go to take classes as well, but I don't think drawing skill is necessary. You just, uh, what you need is a willingness to learn and open to new things so you can, uh, you know, uh, what is it? advancing yourself. You can advance yourself to be better. And like I say, uh, if you train yourself to see things, uh, to break it down to its most basic shape, you basically can draw anything. And unless you want to, uh, uh, you know, like uh, add your uh, piece with your own drawings, it you really don't need to be, to, to be uh, like a a skilled 
drawing artist. That's what I'm saying. Because, you know, you can have a stone and just trace it and then build a vessel around it or wire wrap it and then you can start adding uh, oops that's uh, broken you can start adding elements maybe like uh, you want like a large pail or you want to add uh, a lot of uh, granulation maybe and I know you can buy casting pieces uh, like in Rio Grande like they have flowers or uh, leaves so you can add those to your design as well like I know like the popular one is kind of like just like a round uh, flower thing like so and then they also have the curvy uh, what is it leaf that you can use so if you think you cannot uh, you don't have the skill yet to uh, to make your jewelry from scratch you can definitely use these uh, casting pieces and just start by uh, combining them and put them together and see how the how it flows well enough to your liking doesn't have to be complicated at first like a lot of people just make a simple bezel design and if you think like if you start to think oh, well that's not enough I don't want to be like everyone else then you start figuring uh, things out like adding little details that you can call yours like could be your signature design instead of just you know simple bezel Like simple bezel could be good for a stone that is like super marvelous and you don't want to cover it with like don't want to take the attention away from the stone itself then maybe a simple bezel could be a good option but for like planar stone or stones that sometimes stones have flaw and you want to cover the flaw you can add some design to it so that's my take anyway. I'm not saying like I, I'm the most oh, well uh, educated person in the world. So you can you just take my advice with a grain of salt. I think that's a saying, right? Just just my two cents. So let's try. Uh, drawing this butterfly uh, moth, this polyphemous moth. Let's see how we can do this on camera. So basically, you have like this uh, straight line, right? So you want to draw that straight line. It's good to have this uh, quadril pad because it has the guidelines. So if you're not uh, that good with drawing freehand yet, the lines can be a good guidelines for you to st start at least. So we want to uh, mark the middle. You can count how many squares it takes so like 11 maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 okay. so you want uh, see like this is like uh, I guess math in high school or whatever kind of uh, you can uh, kind of applicable like uh, the degree of the angle and whatnot you can start with that you know so you can I would say it's about like 45 ish 40 45 degree angle 
so and then there is like your triangle right more or less like so and then you also have the bottom triangle like so now we have the basic shape of the moth hi L hello again uh, for anyone that just joined in, uh, if you don't see my post on the jewelry group, that's because I am limiting myself not to post too much on those groups because I have received complaint that some people saw my post as spams. So if you want to be notified when I'm going live, it the best way is to subscribe to my YouTube channel or to join my Facebook group where I can share whatever I want in that group because it's my group and you can just search Popney Cute VIP on Facebook and I will be there you can join my group so now we want to move on to the body which is a uh, like elongated oval and it stops more around that you can like kind of like draw a line here that connects the two wings and you can see that the body stops just right where the line here so that's what I'm gonna do it stops right there right and now you can uh, start shaping the uh, flowy like dynamic line on it so it's not uh, super dramatic uh, so it's gonna be um, like so so and then you can start making uh, this line over here for the left wing okay more or less like so and then you can start shaping the triangle at the bottom for the bottom wings curves a little bit on here it's so when you uh, erase guidelines here I probably should have used like a red pencil or a blue pencil for the guideline so it's still there and you can observe that uh, they all start from there so now you have uh, the moth more or less so what do you think is this doable for you uh, And then, you know, basically this is the, the leg, it's just kind of like an elongated uh, oval with a little, what is it, like bloop, right there, just a little uh, oval again, and, and now you have the leg. So was that easy or not? Uh, do you think you can uh, learn from this? Let me know in the chat. So this is uh, my drawing and the sample side by side. 
Oh, I hope you can see it. All right. It's not perfect, but you know, this is a uh, it's kind of hard to draw well on live camera like a, it's going to take a long time if I have to make it super perfect or a longer time anyway. Not super long, but Bonnie say, I can see where picking out base shapes uh, would be good, a good skill to practice. Elle said, this technique is definitely helpful. Thank you. Well, thank. Uh, well, I'm glad that you uh, think this is helpful because I really want you to uh, be better at making jewelry. We all can use pretty art, right? Um, let's see if there is more. Um, I want to see if there is a better picture. What about some fish? Fish. The fish is definitely super easy, I think. The fish is just a. Fish is just an elongated oval, and this is a triangle here, and this is also like a, you know, a tail, but this is a triangle, the basic shape of a triangle, and then you add a little triangle in the middle, and triangle, this is also, uh, it looks a little more like oval. And this is a triangle. Even the mouth is a triangle. It's a triangle cut. So this is where you like subtract it, uh, this area. So let's see uh, how I break it down uh, to make the fish. Let me make sure I'm on camera. So we have like a long oval, right? And then we have the, like I say, try to divide uh, into uh, to segment, uh, to segment it. Is that the word? Like to divide it into several segments. So that way you have a guideline. So if you can have a picture that you can draw over, like maybe you can like uh, uh, copy it to like a uh, scan it and print it on your computer, and then you start drawing grid lines on it, so you know where like how long it should be and where the uh, the fin should be. That should be really helpful for beginners. I'm just gonna eyeball it, and it looks like it. The fins start just almost right in the middle, so this is around the middle of the fish, and you have little triangle here, right, and then smaller triangle, and then another triangle for the tail and see I like to draw a line here see like it stops right a little bit before the fin end is where the bottom fin start so that's what I'm gonna do it's about there so the the bottom fin should start right here and then you have uh, this. This just start. This 
put them uh, oval here and start just a little behind the middle line so it's got to be right here so and then you have like this funky uh, oh, is that also a fin? I don't know fish parts name so and then you have a triangle for the mouth right this is where you sub subtract your shape and there's a smaller triangle going here this is also where you subtract the shape so when you erase it you get the mouth and you get your tail uh, all shaped uh, well enough so now you just kind of you know go over it again make it more organic looking make it better less geome uh, geometric I guess that's the word and make it a little more flowy same with this one make the edge a little rounder this one is already an oval and this one has a little twist look to it and then that's the eye there you go you have the fish mm. not so fat around here so I'm gonna take out a little bit of the opal mm. gonna erase a little bit where So there, you have the fish. Wasn't that easy? Do you think it's easy enough? I can find something else in this book to draw. Hmm. There is a squirrel. What about we draw a squirrel? We break it down. We break down a squirrel. Okay, let's see. I'm okay. gonna in first so it's what we've learned tonight to break it down let's see if you can think of what is the basic shape uh, Sally asked okay what would you do with the fish design uh, I'm not doing anything with the fish design I am here to show you how to break down uh, complicated shapes into the basic geometry shape so you can draw better that's that's my point here tonight is to break down complicated shapes into the basic shapes so and then after you break it down you can start uh, going over your basic shapes and get uh, the final shape that looks like uh, the model over here so this is just gonna help you draw better basically I'm not I'm not doing anything with this uh, with this fish but I'm just showing you how to uh, be a how to draw better by uh, seeing how you can break down uh, things 
to its most basic shape. So let's see if you can think of what the squirrel uh, basic shape should be. So Sally, this is helpful uh, if you know, if you can see uh, the basic shape that formed the squirrel or the bunny or whatever that you see and then you can this would help you uh, compose uh, a better design you know because sometimes people say like I want to make a squirrel but I, I don't know how to draw a squirrel you know something like that and if you can see how uh, this is a chipmunk actual, actually not a squirrel if you can see how the chipmunk or the squirrel can be broken down into several basic shapes and then you can uh, start doing that and suddenly you have a drawing of a chipmunk or a squirrel this is like uh, like I say like it's the best way to learn is to have the basics down. So this is like the basic of drawing, I should say. Uh, Elsa, the chipmunk looks like it has a circle body and maybe an oval head. Yeah, I would, I would agree, but yeah, that could definitely be it. But I think the head is more like a teardrop because this way is like pointier than the, the back of the head. But you can definitely start with a uh, like an oval and then add a little triangle to make a teardrop. So that works too. So let's see how we can draw the chipmunk here um, so let's see we can start with an oval like uh, Al suggested and then make it into a teardrop And then you have uh, the circle for the body right here. So sometimes I, I like to, like I said, I like to take little grid lines to make sure like where the legs or uh, the ear should be. So if you take a line over here from the mouth, like a horizontal line, you can see that the part of the back is more than half the bottom here. So that's how I want to draw it. Make sure like the bottom isn't too big. So it's definitely like smaller part than the top here. So now we can have like this is like the place where the hand should be and this is another one and then we have another say it's another circle or oval for the hand neck uh, yeah, the head or neck right here, and then like a stop right here. Right here, this should be where the leg, and. So it should be around in the middle here, you get the foot. Oops, I'm off camera. 
And the foot just looked like a little rectangle. And then you also have kind of a rectangle for the tail. So this is the basic geometry uh, shapes for the chipmunk. So now we have uh, say the eye is about here and this is a little triangle for the ear. So it's almost almost a chipmunk, All right? almost a chipmunk. So now let's refine the shape to make it a lot more like the chipmunk. So we just want to make the line a little more fluid like usual. Make it curvier to follow the organic uh, shape, right? So I'm gonna erase some of the guideline. There is a little uh, oval for the finger and it's eating something like a nut. But this is where the finger should be. Just divide into the shows like three fingers so to fight into like one two three and start shaping it so drawing makes uh, uh becomes little easier if you have all of these little guidelines to follow instead of oh and if you're trying just to like uh, draw the odd line outright it it makes it harder and make people think they cannot draw because they think they should start uh, suddenly uh, create this perfect chipmunk so this is where the choppy cheek and then this is the arm or neck arm neck uh, something Now we we'll start with the body. The body is a little too small, looks like. So there's another uh, three. Uh, what a toast three toes so one two three and just refine the shape a little bit so now we can start moving on to the next uh, where's a foot 
and it has a little what do you call this part I don't know I don't know the English word looks like something that just uh, I don't know what the what it what it is called in English so to fight into three again so it's gonna be the toes so and then just make it bushier and look more organic here and just a rectangle so I'm gonna erase my guidelines so it's not perfect but this is the basic shape for uh, the chipmunk pause yeah maybe pause but this part that just uh coming out uh this part i don't know if it has a different name for it if it's just a part of the toes the paw i'm not sure not a chipmunk expert here So this is just the basic shape of the chipmunk. See, I, I think I drew the body a little too small. But yeah, drawing is not that hard once you know how to break it down into a basic shape. So let me know if you have uh, any question, maybe I will try to answer it. My chipmunk looks a little scary. Do you think this is enough or should I go a uh, little more with more examples? Let me know. Let's see if I can find anything. In this drawing book. I think fruits are easy. Right. Mm, mushrooms. Do you think you got enough just from my four examples that I made? I had a hummingbird, a moth. A fish and a chipmunk. Do you want to see me breaking down any other shapes? Just let me know in the chat. Uh, this is mostly just trees. Not sure if there's any worthy. Elle thinks uh, she got the basics down. Okay, that's cool. Uh, maybe we can move on to uh, audience challenge. I have a lot of stones to choose from, and you let me know which stone I should work on and to sign impromptu on camera. Thank you. 
can see them. Okay, I've got a lot of different uh, shapes. Oh, I, I like this shape uh, right here. This is like, uh, I bought a lot of these shapes because I want to make birds out of them. Um, See, so yeah, I have like this shape again. Well, I don't know what you call this shape. It's kind of like a... Is there a special name for this shape? It's not a marquise because the the side is the sides are not mirroring each other. Um, let me know if you see something some stone that you want me to design impromptu on camera. These are the selections that we have to make. Anyone? Go back again. That was the last page. Check you say I pick one. Hmm. I pick one. See, let's just pick the one that I say I'm going to make a bird out of it. Because I bought a lot of these and then like I never, just never really do anything with it. Okay, let's see. Uh, this stone. I think this stone like shaped like a simplistic bird. Focus. There we go. This is a dino bone capuchon. Uh, Elsa, if you like the yellow one on second, third or second page. Do you mean uh, these yellow ones? The bumblebee, Jasper? These ones? Uh, I also I like your stone trapper keeper. Where did you find the plastic files to keep the stones in? I got them from Amazon. These are coin plastic sheet plastic sh uh, sheets plastic sleeves. There you go. These are coin plastic sleeves. I also got the bigger one, like the one right here, and they are the baseball card uh, sleeves. This one, so the baseball card has nine slots for my bigger stones, and for my smaller stones, I have the coin 
plastic sleeves and they have 20 slots. Okay, let's see. Let's let's try this one too. For else request. Okay, this one is a bumblebee jasper. And this one is the oh, this one is a dino bone. Okay, let's start with the dino bone first. I'm gonna trace it. So imagine I'm making a bezel for this one. So that's the shape. Maybe I'll make a comical bird. Maybe like so, like a fancy tail. Still don't. I don't have any preference yet what the tail would be made of. Could be wire wrap like my previous bird, or it could be just cut from a sheet. Maybe I'll add a beak, a little beak to it. Now because I like uh, dynamic and more organic lines, I like to make my... Uh, the signs to have varying width, like uh, this part is thinner than this part. So that's what I'm going to do if I had to make it. Hmm. Maybe I'll add like dangly, dangly feet legs like so just to make it fun I think I like to have some element of fun in my pieces so that would be the whimsical legs so I think that's that's what I'm going to do with it Maybe I'll add a different color uh, for the beak, just so it's more fun to have something else, not just a monotonous color. And then uh, if I'm feeling fancy, maybe I'll stamp all around the bird, like with uh, lines or some stamps that I have, I don't know, I don't remember what kind of stamps do I have. And it could be either a, a brooch or a pendant, I think. So what do you think of these? 
That's a my tiny, tiny little bird. Well, not so tiny, but you know, it's a cute little bird. Um, now let's see what's for the... Hey, it has a little heart on it. I just noticed. See, it, it looks a little bit like a heart. That's, that's kind of fun. <laughs> I like finding patterns on the stone. Uh, should this be a cocktail ring or should it be a pendant or should it be a, a cuff? Let's go a little bit. Maybe we should make a cuff out of this one. Kind of a fun uh, stone there. Okay, let's see if we can make this into a cuff. Now, when, when I'm making a cuff, I like to have my stone resting on my wrist like this because, you know, it's just the way to do it. So I know, like, do I want to make a wire uh, cuff or should it be like an armor uh, cuff, like the thick cuff? Now, the, how to ter determine that it, uh, the best way sh uh, would be on my own wrist instead of, you know, just on paper. So, if I do it like this, then I know, like, hmm, I think it should rest like this, or maybe like this, or this, or like that. Okay, so, I think I want to, I want to make it. Uh, oriented this way so what if we like a bezel it and then we have some wire wire cage going on So this is what I like to do is I like imagining uh, how the design would flow on my wrist here if I am making a cuff. Okay, let's let's try. Tracing the stone. Okay, I want to make the point a little like elfish, uh, pointy type. So maybe I will have like a wire uh, curl like so. That's not the same uh, length. Oops. Okay, it's right here. Okay, like so. 
maybe I'll have something coming out from here to join to join it uh, over here. Maybe I'll have some wire going up across. Like so. Um, I think I want to make a curl here. I don't like it just like a half moon there. It's not really inspiring. Cause I like I like curls. I like curls. Should this have curl too? Let's make everything like full of curls. So this is the same as uh, like my the way my uh, I like to work is that I create both sides at the same time. This is the same as when I am making the real thing. That way, it's easier for me to duplicate as it as it uh, as it happens. Uh, as opposed as if you make just one side first and then go to the other side then it it makes it a little more complicated to uh, to copy if you make it at the same time then like it's still fresh on your mind and that way it still make it make it a little easier I think if I am, if I am a little, uh, I might want this to go over the stone, so I might just uh, like solder it over here, but not on top, so then I can bring it over the stone. Maybe like that. It's kind of like encase, uh, encasing. Still make it a little different. So I guess it depends whether I want this to be like wire wrapped, or do I want, or do I want it to be? Soldered. I don't think it mattered that much. The design would still be the same, just the treatment will be a little different. If I am feeling fancy, I can solder little spokes to go over here. Although, it probably would be rather hard to solder. But you know, I like to challenge myself. And also doing this would make it more structurally sound, so it doesn't, is not easily move or getting caught on something. 
that is always my concern when I'm designing uh, a jewelry. Will it be uh, be easily bent or get caught on anything? So I I want my jewelry to last forever for uh, generations. So I try to make them as sturdy as possible. Now if I could find... Maybe I should make a little heart here because this has a little heart. So instead of just a teardrop, make it a heart. be fun. Hmm, now how would I connect uh, it? I'm thinking if if I want this to be a solid cuff or do I want it to like just attach by jump ring so the parts can move you know kind of like a chain bracelet or a or a cuff guess that's something that I have to decide later if I want to make this a chain bracelet or a, cuff, a solid cuff maybe a solid cuff because then it would then it would look a lot, a lot fancier. I think I'm going to end up making this a little more complicated than it should. Maybe I'll, I'll just have something like that, like a hammered ends, like two wire with hammered ends, and then join them, solder them, and and then form them into cuff. So what do you think of that one? I will have the design to go over uh, the stone. There we go. That's my cuff. Taking a little heart inspiration from the stone. So I incorporated uh, uh, two hearts on each side. Hi Patsy! Uh, so what do you think of this one? Uh, is this a keeper or not? Uh, let's see if we can do another one. say I would buy it well I guess I will have to make it <laughs> uh, should it be copper or silver I think copper would look really good both both actually would look really good because this part is uh, 
This part is gray, so maybe silver. Silver with brass, maybe that would look super cool. Because the yellow part of this and then the grayness of silver. Hmm, that's a thought, right? Brass and silver. Okay, I guess I will have to make this one and see how I will end uh, the end. Maybe I will make a, another curl uh, at the end to make it staple as a cuff. Okay, let's try this odd shaped stone. Uh, this one is a tiger eye. sure if you can see uh, the cattle yens. Oh, there you go. Woo! Is that how you say it? Cattle yens? Cattle yens? I don't know how to say that word. I, I only know how to spell it. The tiger eye is, is quite a pretty stone. Okay, look, what can we make out of this claw-shaped stone? This is January 27. Oh. What if we make this look like a cornucopia? Cornu, cornucopia? Is that it? Corn it's another weird word. Cornucopia. Or a vase. So, what if we make hmm, maybe like a fun flowers, like a flower arrangement or something? Hmm. Make little cups and granules. Add some leaves. See, when I add granules, I like to add um, different uh, sizes. Because that's my whole thing. Like I said yesterday, I like, I like layers, I like textures. So, the way you can achieve like a layered look or more dynamic look in your jewelry is by adding different uh, sizes. Because like if you have the, just the same size of stones, it would look really monotonous. Did I say that word right? Mono monotone monotonous. And so you want to have like varying uh, sizes of granules 
then it would look really really organic and uh, you know more interesting basically well to me anyway see all the black part should be granola uh, wait, maybe I'll add more flour here So I think my option is either I can kind of like frame it like so or do I want to or do I want to make these uh, shapes like going over it so not framing it but it's gonna be just like a straight or kind of like a little curved line going on the back so maybe just just like so it's definitely something to think about maybe add a flower there I think that's a little cute. So what do you think of this one? Mm. Make it straight on the camera. So maybe like it can be a pendant like so having like little tube uh, tube bail on the back so it can uh, go over the chain like so so what about this one like this one too. It has a potential to be really cute. Maybe just have like a leather as the chain to match the color of uh, this tiger eye. Like the olive. Uh, do I still have the leather somewhere yeah. we will have this color leather or the chain or maybe we can go with a little darker one that's something to be decided later Okay, should we go on or should we stop now? Should, uh, do you want to see me to sign something else? Let me know in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Elsa, it's pretty. Well, thank you. What else? So let me know if um, 
Do you guys enjoy this type of video? Uh, how to design and watching me design impromptu on camera? Or would you prefer me uh, doing demos like uh, making those uh, poppy earrings or uh, like the wire wrapping? Let me know uh, which type of video should I make more. This is tonight's impromptu design. You can sign it January I think we're gonna just end the video right here. And we'll uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna try to uh, create paddle on wire is that something you want to see me doing on camera i know this girl vicky and she said that she's struggling uh, on creating petals at the end of wire and want me to record a video of me doing a uh, petal how to make it straight and not curving on one side So I think that's the video that I'm going to do tomorrow. Uh, I'll say I like both drawing and demo videos because they're both very informative but I like watching demos because I like watching you melt stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah that's definitely something like watching me melting stuff. <laughs> uh, watching me fail doing it would be really fun too. Uh, what do you think of tomorrow we're gonna make some uh, petals out of wire something like that uh, you know what I'm talking about right um, okay uh, let's just uh, let's just say tomorrow I'm gonna make a petal from like copper or silver wire uh, and I'll teach you how to create one that is straight and not curved to one side so that's for tomorrow's topic make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel uh, like I said earlier I, I I don't think I will post my invitation to my life in uh, jewelry groups anymore if you want to get my notification either you subscribe to my youtube and uh, go join my popnikit vip group that way you get the notification when i'm going live because like i said earlier i'm not sure how long can i extend the uh, me posting the invitation every day into various jewelry groups because I think many would see it as a spam because it's every day basically 
so if you want to keep getting the notification make sure you subscribe or join my Facebook group okay, uh, okay that would be the end of tonight I'll see you guys tomorrow bye thank you for watching